Hello, my name is Rosa and here are three Google hacks for remote interpreters. Before we start, there are a few things I would like you to keep in mind. Uh, this is Google, so the information is not 100% reliable. Whenever you're in doubt, always clarify with the speakers. And what I'm about to suggest is not meant to replace your note-taking memory or listening skills. These should be used to provide you with additional support only. With that being said, let's begin. Hack number one, set up your Google account in your target language. And what I mean by that is setting it up in the language that is your target language the most. Of course, in consecutive interpretation, the target and source languages change back and forth. But for example, in my case, my language pair is English-Spanish. I am based in the US and the clients who request my services are all English speakers who need to communicate with Spanish speakers. Therefore, the largest volume of words I have to interpret is from English to Spanish. And also the most complicated terms I have to interpret are from English to Spanish for the most part. So in my case, Spanish is the target language the majority of time. Now let me show you why that is important and useful. Uh, let's say that, for example, I am interpreting for a gastroenterologist and the doctor mentions the term or acronym EGD and let's say I am not familiar with that. If I look for EGD in Google, as you can see, it will give me millions of results in English, but if you look at the right side of the screen, it will also give me the term in Spanish, which is ultimately what I want because I have to interpret that into Spanish, and that is the reason why I set it up that way. Google is great to help you with addresses. I don't know about you, but whenever I know I'll have to convey someone's address, I get on high alert because many people tend to blur it out at 100 miles per hour or they may mispronounce parts of the address. And sometimes there are street names or city names that are very hard to understand. So this is what I do. Whenever I hear a cue that indicates that I'll have to get ready to convey an address because the client is going through a verification process or filling out a form or something like that, I immediately open my Google tab and I type whatever part of the address I can understand. Usually we can get the street number, the state and the zip code, which in my experience are the easiest parts to get. If you type at least part of that into Google's search bar, it will most likely suggest the correct address. Let's take a look at one example. This is the address of a Walmart in Texas, 7451 McCart Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas, 76133. I typed the street number correctly, but I totally missed the street name and the city name, and Google still suggested the correct address. And the third and final hack is turning on Google's live caption, or I should say Google Chrome's live captions, which is not quite the same, but it's part of the Google family anyway. If you don't know about live captions, uh, it's a relatively new feature that Google Chrome is offering to improve accessibility for the deaf and the hard of hearing. And it basically transcribes every audio that is playing in your browser, and that includes videos, ads, live speech, if you take audio or video calls from Google Chrome, and it even works if you join a video conference using Zoom and WebEx web browser versions. In order for this to work, you must have the most updated version of Chrome, and if you want to learn how to activate them, I've shared a link in the description box. After you activate them, you don't really have to do anything else, it will simply start transcribing automatically whenever there's audio playing in your computer. To give you a quick demonstration, I am using one of the practice videos I posted here in this channel. I muted the video so I can keep talking, but as you see, the automatic captions are transcribing the video pretty accurately, and this is what the captions look like. A few things you should know is that so far, the live captions are only available in English, so when parties are speaking a different language, the captions will type gibberish or nothing at all. They are faulty and many times will transcribe things incorrectly. 
and they disappear from the screen after a few seconds. I hope that technologies can continue to improve and turn into reliable tools for us to do a better job. I don't think technologies will fully replace us one day, but I do think we should use technology and digital tools as much as possible to help us do a better job. Anyway, I know this tends to be a little bit controversial, so I would love to hear your thoughts about this. So if you are in favor or against the use of these technologies or tools, please let me know in the comments. I hope you are spending wonderful holidays with your loved one and staying safe. Have a very happy new year. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Adios.